Talk in the studio is Sir Peter Ford, former UK ambassador to Syria. Uh, many people will say this is uh, qu quite little, far too late. Uh, yes, indeed, but the, there is a silver lining in the middle of all, all this uh, tragedy, and it is that 98% of Aleppo now is virtually at peace. Um, many people in Aleppo, we've seen the, the pictures, have we not, are happy at the outcome, uh, relieved that at least there is no more bombing, um, they can begin to uh, meet uh, lost uh, relatives um, and begin to uh, pick up their lives uh, again. There, there is also longer term uh, hope that within a matter of possibly months that the remaining pockets of resistance to the Syrian government forces uh, will be uh, overcome and that Syria as a whole uh, can begin to live again. Implicit in what you say is criticism of those uh, who are attacking the Assad forces and earlier this year you likened the UK government's intervention in Syria to a dog returning to its own vomit. Do you stand by that? Uh, absolutely, I uh, double down uh, uh, on it uh, because the British government uh, has been spending millions of taxpayers' money propping up the armed opposition groups and uh, sending them uh, uh, weapons, equipment, uh, giving them diplomatic support and encouraging the illusion that they could win in Aleppo or that the West would come charging over there, over the hill to their rescue. Those who've been indulging in moral posturing today ought to search their consciences and ask themselves whether it was wise to encourage the armed opposition groups the way they have been encouraged and to, above all, to encourage the illusion that, that there would not be an outcome such as we are seeing it today. These same people should ask themselves whether they should not have pressed the armed opposition groups to accept the offer of a ceasefire that was on the table, the offer of safe passage that was on the table of, uh, some weeks ago. Instead, they did not encourage them. They encouraged illusion with the result that it's the poor civilians who are paying the price for that moral posturing. The moral posturing, as you put it, of Barack Obama, David Cameron and other leaders, what was behind it then? Uh, <laughs> In, in many cases, uh, sour grapes, because they got the Syrian calculation wrong. Uh, you will recall that five years ago, uh, these people were predicting the imminent demise of Assad. It was a question of time, we were told. They were also told that the uh, moderates were just waiting in the wings, ready to step in. It turns out that these moderates are working hand in glove with Al-Qaeda. Uh, this is just sour grapes uh, on the part, in particular, of the Obama administration. And it's, a, a, it, it's tragic that Britain is nowhere in this. Uh, British diplomacy, described by uh, Andrew Mitchell in the Commons today as being muscular, uh, in fact, has been a pygmy because we disqualified ourselves, we excluded ourselves, our relations with Russia are abysmal, uh, our relations with the Syrian government non-existent, uh, we're on bad terms with Iran, we've confused even our Saudi friends, and we've got off on the wrong foot with the Trump administration. If, if this is muscular diplomacy, then my 40 years as a diplomat have been wasted. Does this country have blood on its hands when it comes to Syria? Does whom, sorry? Does the UK government have blood on its hands? Uh, yes, I think it does. So it, it has encouraged and armed and supplied and given support to armed groups who are indistinguishable from uh, groups that we consider terrorist. Uh, one particular uh, group uh, was notable for beheading young Palestinian boys uh, for alleged misbehavior. These are the kind of people that our taxpayer uh, pounds have been going to support. Yes, we do have blood on our, our hands. And is it not remarkable that the British government only in November refused visas to some Syrian Christian bishops 
who wish to come to talk about the plight of Christians in Syria. We're not supposed to hear about them because it doesn't fit the government narrative. So Peter Ford, thank you very much for joining us this evening.